welcome to Crystal City near Washington DC for the Surface Navy Association's 2018 National Symposium. For the very first time, Navy Recognition is an official media partner of the event. First, let's meet with Rear Admiral Hart, Chairman of the Symposium Committee, to learn more about SNA. The Surface Navy Association, which now is about 30 plus years old, was instituted as a forum for camaraderie, for professional interchange, and for an opportunity for all of the members of the surface community to interact and to improve both their degree of professionalism inside the community as well as keep abreast of the various and latest initiatives. Those of us who have been in the business for quite a while recall that when we work here in Washington and put together our funding packages, it's often done by stovepipe platforms, submarines, aircraft, destroyers, whatever. But under the CNO's guidance in the course of the last two years, the Navy staff is taking a cross-cutting view so that we ensure that all of these different platforms complement each other with the ultimate goal of a warfighting aim or end. And so based on that, we've chosen to focus in consonance with the CNO's specific guidance that we look across the domains of warfighting, whether it's anti-submarine warfare, surface warfare, air defense, etc. So we've taken that particular thrust this year for the symposium. Lockheed Martin unveiled today a new scale model showing their offering for the U.S. Navy FFGX program. The model is using the LCS hull form, Freedom type. It is fitted with a 57 mm Mark 110 main gun, space for longbow hellfire surface-to-surface -surface missiles, 16 Mark 41 vertical launch systems, 8 surface-to-surface anti-ship missiles, Harpoon all rasm. Four Nolka decoy launchers. The Enterprise uh, radar by Raytheon. There's a recess space uh, for the funnels for increased uh, low observability features. CWIP electronic warfare antennas. A laser weapon system made by Lockheed Martin a serum launcher on top of the helicopter hangar as per the requirement, as well as a helicopter pad for an MH-60 helicopter. The Lockheed Frigate retains the quad water jet propulsion system of the LCS Freedom type and a towed array. However, a couple of bilge keels have been fitted towards the stern for increased stability. something new and old. This is something we developed for the um, carriers, for self-defense of the carriers, uh, several years ago. We, the reason we brought it out here for Surface Navy Association Symposium is that it has applicability in other platforms as well. As, as you may know, the littoral combat ship is asking for a deck-mounted, over-the-horizon launcher. Okay? This is the answer to that question. What we've done is we've taken the Mark 41 VLS canister and we have wrapped it into what we call a cocoon situation, which gives it supportability, transportability, protection, and interface to the canisters. Instead of bringing a missile onto the ship and a launcher, the ship can have one launcher, which is compatible with the, Mark, the current Mark 41, which is in our entire fleet, over 7,000 cells. So you take let me show you this. This is representative of a current canister that's used in all, all throughout the fleet and allied fleets as well. You can take this exact canister and it can be part of this adaptive launching system. 
Now you have multiple different types of missiles that you can fire out of, off of your ships, LCS, FFGX, and large decks. You know, Raytheon and Consberg have teamed together uh, to develop and uh, market the Naval Strike Missile. Uh, one of the initiatives that has been undertaken and is under contract is this summer, 2018, the U.S. Army is going to take this notion of cross-domain fires and cross-domain integration and demonstrate it by firing uh, a Naval Strike Missile, much like you see here uh, on the wall behind us at, at a ship at sea during the exercise. I think it's an important initiative. Um, the, the combatant commander, the PACOM commander, Admiral Harris, has uh, expressed a strong interest in all the services becoming more uh, integrated in this, cross, in this notion of cross-domain warfare. And I think the Naval Strike Missile um, is one of those missiles that is, is very well suited for it. It's already in operation in the Polish Navy going from shore to sea targets or from shore to shore targets. Um, the Norwegian Navy's already fielded the missile, and the, mi the missile itself, no matter where you shoot it from, can hit a moving target at sea or it can hit a, a stationary target ashore. So it's, it's designed from the, from the get-go to be a cross-domain capable weapon. The Army and the Marine Corps both have their own reasons on why they're interested in NSM, I'm sure. Uh, as uh, Admiral Copeman mentioned, the first prime motive, I believe, came from Admiral Harris, the PACOM commander, who wants to demonstrate increased emphasis on cross-domain fires, and that's been an emphasis in the U.S. services now for uh, several months, uh, probably coming up on years. Uh, we're excited as Kongsberg Raytheon team because we're bringing a product that we think is very timely and capable to meet some of the requirements that we envision they either have or will distill in the very near future. Uh, the picture we have here is actually uh, what we intend to fire from the RIMPAC shot in uh, the summer of 18, but it depicts the Army's high expanded mobility tactical truck with our uh, NSM coastal defense system mounted on the back of it. That's the same system that's been deployed to the Polish coastal defense forces and that we have had the pleasure of uh, being involved in some test shots with them and the Norwegian Navy where we combine uh, firing assets from both these coastal defense batteries and ships at sea uh, or against land targets as well. So we think that the emphasis on Cross domain and bringing all shooters together in a distributed fashion to uh, mass on a target or targets provides a wonderful opportunity. We're just real excited about it. As you're well aware, we've had a long established relationship with the UAE. Most recently, we um, did a Block 2 sale of RAM for their Binuna class and their Ariella class. And recently, they're going to expand their surface navy and are procuring two additional Corvette classes. Um, while it's undetermined exactly how that competition will turn out, we feel very comfortable and confident that RAM and ESSM will be a part of the ship self-defense solution for the UAE Navy. The two missiles actually bring kind of a layered defense for the UAE Navy. Um, consistent with what they've done with the Binuna and the Ariella class. On the Binuna they have both ESSM and RAM, and with the Ariella they have the RAM missile system. So that gives them the layer defense capability that they're looking for in supporting their operations. We have traditionally supported the integration for the UAE Navy with support from Raytheon missile systems, the various combat systems, and then the platform integrator. So it's kind of a tri-party arrangement we have when we do integration for the UAE.